to three, four. Okay, well here we have it. Welcome to Kalorta. My children. <laughs> Some of my alcoholic children. <laughs> That's enough. That's um, a piece of, uh, that was a, my Christmas present from Chris Wallace, who made the film Numb Sister. That was uh, all made from driftwood and things he found on the beach. That was something that I made out of corks and uh, hazelnut shells that have been chewed open by uh, squirrels. Um, 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 what else? Uh, to my workshop. <laughs> this is where I spend most of my time. This is, that's the, the it's the cover to, um, what was that? Spiral, spiral Insana there. The bottom half was Spiral Insana, and the top half was, what was it? That 10 inch compilation, I can't remember. Four years and 30 seconds. That's the one, yeah. Okay, we go through here. <clears throat> this was my studio and my record room. But unfortunately, the kids have moved in. Um, put some light in here. Pretty dark in here, right? Is it? Um, yeah. So you were trying to imagine it without the bunk beds. It's my record collection there, which I can't get to anymore because the kids have moved in. Uh, again, it's all recycled. Every every piece of wood, every every thing with character around here has been uh, found somewhere. Um, there's a my unbelievable guitar which was featured in an exhibition in, uh, in London. Say hi to the camera. <laughs> <coughs> um, that's my daughter's room up there, which is just decorating, so it's a complete pigsty at the moment. I was very fond of those stairs. I, I made those out of bits and bobs that I found. Um, I can't think of anything else to say about this. So it's, a, it's a real mess in here, and um, I apologise for that. Sometimes it looks a lot better. The entire thing, this entire workshop, was built for about five pounds. Everything is recycled. It's all made from pallets or um, recycled nails. The floor is made from recycled tiles, broken tiles that I found. Um, in fact, I didn't. The only thing that's bought is the roofing, and, uh, and that was cheap off a tinker. So about five pounds a lot, really. Um, uh, sort of collection of rubbish. The uh, the shells here, the scallop shells, all came from the the, uh, the coast. Spent two weeks collecting them. It's great. 
is for roofing her, that's amazing. I mean, that would last, that would last forever. If I could get enough, I could do the entire house. Once they're in this state, you can do anything with them. You can like just you can put it on somebody's head. Let it stay like that. Talk to me then. No, no, don't, don't disturb it because he can wake up anytime. Is he awake? No, it's, no, it's, it's a bit. I think it's because it's windy and there's a lot of people around. But usually, no, no it's, it's not going to do it this time. Would be the only time he's on bloody film, wouldn't it? That doesn't work. <laughs> Come on. No animals were harmed used to making this film. <laughs> it's not going to work. Sorry about that. <laughs> we'll do it next time. There's too many people around, that's what it is. But generally what happens is the chicken falls asleep and it's just hanging like this and you can do anything with it. You can just like, you know, put it on someone's head and it will just... Would it be like it's dead? <laughs> what? Would it be like it's dead? Yeah, it's just asleep. How do you make it go to sleep? Just by hypnotizing. You can just hypnotize it. You stare at it and then twist it backwards and its head will drop down and it will fall asleep. That's so sweet. Did you try? We used to do it quite a lot once, but not so much anyway. Why not? Can you think you're hungry? There's too many people around. We'll do it later and it gets a bit... Um, that skipper. Okay, the newest addition. Should we lift them out? No, 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 don't lift them out. Is there a mummy there? No. no. Let's lift them out. Don't, let me do it then because I don't want you to disturb them. I've always wanted to see a baby bird. Okay. I've seen one before. I have. I can see one now. I'm just going to tilt it. Go on, bring them out, Dad. No, I'm not going to bring them out. Can you see? Can you see that oh, in there? Oh, they're so cute! Okay. I think it's four. See, so just there in the corner. Yeah. I don't think the light isn't on them. Maybe you won't, you won't pick I up. See, yeah, but I they're really them, cute. Yeah. yeah. Try bringing them out there. No, I'm not going to. Okay, I'm look at them anyways. Go out the way, guys. Can I see them? Hurry up and shut the door. Right, should we go around here? By the time August comes, the, those leaves will be four feet across and you won't be able to see the pond. I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> um, what have we got? They're looking a bit ropey at the moment because they, they've only had one watering this year. But uh, in about three weeks, they'll all be robust and colourful and probably flowering. Most of them will flower within the next probably six weeks. Unfortunately, I'll be away, so I'll miss most of the flowers. But most of these were grown from seeds and, uh, or just cuttings picked up from holiday. Again, it's all recycled stuff, didn't buy anything. It's not because I'm mean, it's just because I really like recycling things. I've got a peyote somewhere. Um, which I smuggled back from uh, Amsterdam. But that's in the greenhouse of the garden at the moment. Okay. Game made from just stuff I found. Pallets and uh, old doors. Please. Is anyone in there? The wire. Where it belongs. <laughs> Several copies. Don't chase the chickens! Hey! Don't chase the chickens!
don't do it because they'll they'll go over the hedge and they won't come back. Okay, I <laughs> yeah, I, I thought that was a perfect place to to um like put a nice low chair in or or a, uh, a sofa, sit down and smoke a joint. But when I finished it, it was the year that I gave up smoking. So I've I've hardly been in there since, to be honest. <laughs> careful about this, the uh, horses have gotten in and, and um, ruined my path. Uh, this is, um, this is my office, this is where I, I, uh, I do, do most of my music stuff these days my listening and uh, well, mail and what have you. I love this environment. It's, it's, it's my favourite place to be in the, uh, the entire house or the house complex. Um, I don't know what to say about this, the sculptures I've done and things around here. My hip hop collection. <laughs> well these are all these. And these are all they're all lady rappers. I'm a pain in your rectum. I am dead. Self slept on. Heavy hit around spit up call me rerun. Hey, 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 I'm what's happening. Hypnotic in my drink. That's right. Shake it till it's thing. That's right. Mr. Moe's on the beat. That's right. That's uh, pictures that have inspired me somehow. What else is there here? Lots of bums for inspiration. <laughs> A print by Roland Topol, who's my probably my favourite artist. A very strange picture that one. Never can quite work out what really is happening in it. Uh, there you have it. That's another one by Roland Topol. Uh, he's truly wonderful, wonderful art, artist, I think. Okay. I think you buy conventional rock LPs and uh, there was always the like the mad bit the freak out piece uh, which was generally at the end of the track when the band finally got going and just as they were about to hit their peak the fade would come and I always find that really irritating and um, I remember I remember buying things like uh, um, I don't know, Robin Trower albums and shit like that, just for that little bit that was a bit further out than, than most things. And um, and from there it just led to to keeping an ear open for anything that, that kind of just, you know, just became a little bit more freaky. What did I... Yeah, and then the Velvet Underground. I heard, I heard Sister Ray. And uh, and that kind of changed everything, really. The fact that someone did a, a huge 17 minutes of kind of freak out stuff was such a surprise to me. As a kid, like a, a 14 year old kid at school, all your mates are listening to like Wishbone Ash and Yes and things like that, but you can't understand it. You don't understand why they, they like this shit. It's funny having said that, now David loves it all. This is really amusing. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Anyway, so the Velvet Underground, and um, and at the time before the Velvet Underground, I was, I suppose, as a teenager, I was listening to things like T Rex and stuff like that, and um, 
There was a track on one of their albums called Elemental Child. Do you know the one? It featured a um, like a seven minute wah wah solo by Mark Boland, who then couldn't play the guitar. And I loved it. I just loved that. But I really thought that uh, even that even then, I just thought, fuck, I could do that. I didn't really want to, but uh, it was so it was so amateur. But that didn't seem to matter really. It was just you know it was taking the music off into another realm, uh, which I liked. So that was it really. It was just it was just keeping your ears open for anything that was peculiar, uh, and um, and not pop. I never liked pop as a kid. Um, having said that, I was listening to T Rex, but something that was kind of like classy pop. I was I was a sign writer and I was in I was asked to paint a window in a studio, the British Market Services um, studio window, and I was there. I was painting the window, and there were some people there in the office and the reception. And John Cleese, do you know him at all? Yeah, John Cleese walked by. It's your birthday. And. Uh, it, we all fell about laughing. It was just so he just walked by on the other side of the road, but. He has such enormously long legs, he was doing the silly walk, virtually. And he was, literally, his legs were like that, you know. And we just fell about laughing. And through, through John Cleese, I just got talking to the engineer. And um, we just started talking about music. And he started saying about how um, he would love to do sessions other than radio adverts, which is what they did in that studio. And I just I just lied and said I got a group. Can I come down this weekend? We do something. He said sure. We'll, we'll book the weekend. And uh, we didn't. In fact, we just we, we booked the Saturday. And uh, we just we just me and a couple of mates went down and recorded the album. It's as simple as that. I don't really want to go into any more detail because I've said so many fucking times it's before. It's on your CD anyway. Oh, I know it is, yeah. No, yeah. What about, um, you know, after that came, after that album came out, you know, it, you, you had such an outrageous artwork that a lot of record stores were love to ha have it in, love to carry it. And uh, people were just buying it just out of curiosity. Yeah. But did you have any intention of developing united dairies i mean as a, no. as a label at the time no because it was it was just the first thing we did i mean it was uh i mean it's been quoted that john said it was a joke it wasn't really a joke but it was, uh, it was like dipping your toe in really we didn't quite know what we were doing just all it was was you know day to day you put out a record we didn't think we could sell it. We had 500 copies. And um, we loved it. We just loved it. We were all happy, really happy with the record. But nobody we knew liked it. And we'd be taking it down to like record stalls in markets and say, would you like to stop this? And they were looking at it and they were saying, oh, it looks a bit dark. What is it? And they'd put it on. I remember one guy, he put it on and he said, he said to me, he said, what kind of music is it? And I said, oh, it's kind of, um, I don't know, it's just a bit weird. And he, he played five minutes of it. He said, this is not weird, it's shit. I said, well, okay, that's your opinion. He said, I'll play you something weird. And he whipped out Being Boiled by the Human League. And he put that on. And it was like, he said, now this is weird. <laughs> I thought that was so amusing. Um, yeah, so we, we just sort of hawked it around various places. And... Uh, to our amazement, within 
I don't know, six weeks we've sold them all. Virgin took a lot. Virgin took uh, because of the cover. They liked the cover. The, uh, whoever was buying for Virgin at the time really liked the cover. Um, how did how did things evolve? Like, how did United Dairies become? You know, how did other people come involved in that? How did other people come to the picture? Like other bands and things like that. I mean, you. John met the Lemon. Well, we we uh, we heard a single by the Lemon Kittens called "Spoon Fed and Wreathing," and we both loved it. So John contacted them and um, arranged to do an album with them. This wasn't till after we'd actually done our, our second and third record. We'd actually recorded these first um, and put them out. But we liked the idea of. Uh, it being a record label because we collected records on record labels that you know we, we we were interested although it sounds really anal now we were really interested in the catalog numbers we wanted to know every release of every record label so um we wanted ours to be like a normal label so we thought if we put three nurse with wound records as one two and three it will look purely like it's just a vehicle for us so we left a gap of two to slot in whatever we, I mean, we, we we approached all kinds of people, um, the guys from a group called the Homosexuals, uh, and a guy called El Vogue. Um, do you know his album at all? He did an amazing album called This Way Out, just a fabulous record. Uh, Nancy Sesse and the Melodeers, do you know them? Yeah, we approached them to do an album as well, and we nearly actually recorded it with them. No, but it didn't quite work out. But all these were going to slot in as number two. And then the Lemon Kittens came along and uh, they got in there. And from there on, uh, through the Lemon Kittens, the guys that had engineered our original records, Bombay Ducks, uh, they did an album. In fact, what they did, we asked them to do uh, a track for a compilation and we put out a thing called Hoisting the Black Flag. And... Uh, they did a track under the name of Hamilton and Duarte, which we could dance music. We thought was fabulous. We loved that. So we said, can you do an album like that? And they said they would. Unfortunately, being engineers, they were more interested in the equipment than the music they produced. So they get wrapped up in fucking EMS synthesizer and all kinds of fair light synths and garbage. And they put together this this is really very average album which uh, which John had already told them we were going to release I was furious at the time because I said it's going to taint our label I don't want this fucking thing on there but we put it out anyway um, the, the other things came along by just you know meeting people and uh, like the Asmus teachings thing I, I, I really like what he did and um, we corresponded for a while and when he when he first played me some of that more uh, electroacoustic stuff rather than his, his synthesized music. I was so enthusiastic about it. That's why Former Nets and House Music came about. HNAS, they were just nice guys and they came over and they, they stayed with us for a while and we grew to, grew to uh, really like Christoph. He's a lovely man and uh, so uh, he, he wanted to record at the same studio that we'd done ours, so we went down and booked a session at IPS for him, went down and me and Dido went and helped him, help them do their album. And it just ended up on UD, I don't know how. It was just getting to know people really, and um, I mean if you're in that circle, sorry, if you're in that circle, you meet people that are doing interesting things. I mean you can pick and choose really. Um, I think I was, I think I made good choices about what, apart from one or two, dodgy ones like, like the Bombay Ducks uh, and uh, and to a degree some of the other things that uh, John was getting involved in uh, the Lemon Kittens in a big way and through them bands like the Shiny Men and um, a follow up a follow up to the uh, Bombay Ducks album called Experiments with Ice did you ever hear that? Oh, it's dreadful it's a dreadful dreadful record um, this is the same guys uh, who did the Bombay Ducks album. 
and John said, "Let's, I'm, I want to put these out. And I said, no, it's just not happening. So he created his own label, which he called Commercial Records. And I think, did he call it Commercial Records? Was it? No, Experimental Records, that's right. To put out commercial rubbish, basically. So he, he put out the second Bombay Ducks album called Experiments with Ice. And The Shiny Men, uh, featuring Robert Wyatt. It was kind of like Canterbury tinged soft machine kind of music. Um, and concentrated uh, his his mu is concentrated really on on the lemon kittens, which left me to uh, to sort of run UD as I wanted it. And I I would just contact people that I admired for compilations, like in drama um, the the French band drama music instantanee and um, Jacques Barrichol. Uh, AMM and various other people just people that had influenced me and to my amazement everybody always said yes the only person who said no to uh, working with me was Luke Ferrari and uh, he was a fucking pain in the ass to be honest I really didn't like that man at all and so much so that it kind of really put me off his music but everybody else I ever contacted um, it was, was really lovely Really nice people. I think I put it down to John the Postman. I think you know, he he stood up and and he you know he would be the first to admit he's completely utterly talentless, and yet he he made this album and he put it out and called Stepping Out at Holt's Brewery was the title, and he was a postman and he was a kind of punk rapping postman, <laughs> and um, yeah he got up and he he, um, he put this album out. And I, I, I thought that was really inspiring. Because he was just so utterly useless. <laughs> Not that I felt that we were useless. It's just that, you know, so if, fucking hell, if he could do it, then you know anybody could do it. Hopefully you're going to edit this. Mm-hmm. <laughs>